We're digging into part two of this five kilowatt monster e-bike build. We're gonna be detailing most of the electronics and the wiring in this one, and it is a ton of work, so let's go. To briefly recap the last episode, I started with a metric ton of painting and then dealing with quite a few hiccups along the way during assembly. This is just about where we ended up with most of the basics of the frame construction completed. Let us pray to the e-bike gods that this episode goes a lot more smoothly. And with that being said, I am already changing things up and already right off the bat running into more issues. This display is not fitting on the handlebars how I want it to, so I will have to find a solution for this later. My rear brake is going to be regen so I don't need a cable but when you don't have a cable this happens so I'll have to fix this as well. You know those builds where everything is fighting you every step of the way? Well here's the front brake that I had every size bracket except for the one I needed. Okay zip ties I can do. I shouldn't have any issues with this. Success! Okay I waited about two weeks and I finally got the bracket that I needed to fit the front brake. These are 203 millimeter rotors and they will stop your bike very quickly. What adds to the stopping power is the fact that they are hydraulic and they are not cable brakes. Some of the bolts on this bike were a little rusty so I'm replacing them with these blue dyed metric bolts. The fact that they kind of match the bike is not an accident. These dirt bike style foam seats are much more comfortable than a regular bicycle seat. You pair that with this much suspension travel and this bike is one of the most comfortable bikes I've ever ridden. Another caveat of purchasing somebody else's abandoned project is a lot of the things can be rusty and dirty and just obviously not brand new. I was skeptical about the condition of this seat but I brought it back to where it looks pretty much brand new. It's always the little details that can help elevate your builds and I found a solution to that display not mounting how I wanted it to. I wanted a display on my bike and the pile of parts that I bought off Craigslist that came with a controller that did not have compatibility for a display. So I'm selling that 80 amp controller and I'm dropping in a 150 amp controller that I'm borrowing permanently from my previous e-bike. I am a huge fan of screens and I think they make everything look much more futuristic and cooler. I told you in part one that I needed to address this kickstand because it is not fitting correctly. Using the factory mounting holes it hits the crank when you're pedaling. Are my cranks too narrow or something? I really don't understand why they would design it like this. If I shift it back away from the crank then it clears just fine. It's very possible that they just put that on the wrong side or welded it in backwards but now I gotta make my own hole. This steel was actually pretty thick and hard to get through. Even with all the little issues that have plagued this install I actually really like this frame. My last e-bike, which is my second e-bike I ever built, I used a much cheaper Chinese frame and that frame is a lot heavier and a lot lower quality than this one. I will be showing you guys that frame in the future because I'm going to be rebuilding that e-bike. I'm going to at least attempt to make a lot of frame modifications to fix some of the issues that I don't like with it. This kickstand, I tell you, this should have been maybe a two minute install and it has been a lot more work than that. It even over rotates so when installed your bike will just fall over so here I am pinning that so it can't rotate as much. I'm nearing the end but I was 100% over this kickstand. I definitely needed to take a break and hang out with my cat. And I don't know how many cats will let you do this but my cat just really doesn't care. He's the coolest cat ever. generally not a fan of adhesives for attaching things but that's how these panels go on. Here you can see my kickstand mods and my anti-rotation pin that I put in there. This thing is now rock solid, it clears the cranks and it's at the appropriate angle so when you put it down it doesn't make your bike fall over. I was debating on where to put the charge port. I figured instead of trying to hide it I would make it a central point of the design. It did come with a cheap plastic charge port but I opted to spend a little bit of money and get this very nice finished aluminum one. Again the magic is in the details. 
I think we found a part that fits without any modification whatsoever. <laughs> you shouldn't ever shy away from problematic builds because when you do get to one that just flows right together, it will seem that much more amazing. I had a lot of ideas on what I wanted to do with the headlights and my last two e-bike builds, the first one and the second one, I used this 7 watt kind of light bar and that worked out really well. And I had already done that so I wanted to try something different. I thought maybe going with two flashlights, one on each side of the handlebars might look kind of different and cool. But I didn't want to run them off batteries so I wanted to integrate them into the bike's electronics. So those dowels that I quote unquote lathed are to act much like the battery and provide pressure onto the LED in the front. And unfortunately, I could not get these to work. I will totally take the blame for it not working, but I do not understand why because it is very simple. It's just two wires powering ground, but for whatever reason, they did not want to light up. I got one to flicker just slightly with the ground wire, but still not anything consistent. Maybe it's because I fed them 5 volts instead of the 3.7 that they were expecting and maybe it overloaded something possibly. I doubt it, but that definitely could have been part of the problem. Thankfully, these flashlights were very cheap, which also might be a reason why they didn't work. Sometimes you have to try things and experiment and fail and that is totally okay. If you're not afraid to break things, you're going to learn a lot more and a lot more quickly than if you are. This isn't even the only lighting system that you're going to see me break and fail in this series. And it doesn't work, so we're moving on. Now it's time to wire up the charge port and the buck converter. The voltage on the battery pack is 72 volts and you do not want to be feeding that into your accessories like your lighting. The buck converter, also known as a step down converter or a DC to DC converter, it will take that 72 volts and drop it down to 12 volts. I'm going to be installing a lot of connectors in line in this part of the wiring and that is so I can remove the components individually without having to desolder anything. So of course the battery has its own connector but I'm also putting a connector on the buck converter and then also on the charge port. If any of these components fail then I can more easily swap them out in the future. Some battery packs only come with two leads coming off of the battery from the factory and I will always add two more leads so that I can charge the battery pack without having to disconnect and reconnect it every time I want to charge it. As you can see I'm having the charge port which then splits off to the battery and then from the battery is going to go to the buck converter which again is also going to get its own connector. A lot of connectors going on here. I believe this is a 15 amp converter, but it will be more than adequate for all of the things I'm going to have running off of it. Another benefit of adding all these connectors is that it makes installation on the bike much easier. And I told you I'd be taking care of my regen brake that has no cable and all I had to do was hit it with a hammer to get that rivet out of there. Now I don't want all of my internal components like the battery and the controller just rattling around in a metal frame. So I'm just cutting some packing foam and fitting it all around the components to make sure that they are not going to be crashing into each other. Thankfully the frame is large enough to fit not only the giant 30 amp hour battery but also the controller. This is going to make for a much cleaner look and you might want to mount the controller outside of the case so that it can get adequate airflow but I'm not going to be pushing this controller anywhere near its limits. I told you guys this was going to be a lot of wiring and here's some more wiring. I feel like this bike is mostly made out of wires which kind of makes sense because it's an e-bike but still this is a lot of wires. It's mostly my fault though. This is a very robust RGB LED controller. I have tried all kinds of different LED controllers and this one is by far my favorite. I didn't know exactly where I wanted to put all these LEDs but I did make a plan. And it's time to make our own custom length RGB strips. 
I actually prefer this black plastic channel, but I had a lot of the aluminum left over, so I'm just making them out of this aluminum channel. I'm just cutting them to length after I measured how long I wanted all of them. This bike is going to have a ton of LEDs. There's basically seven strips that I'm making here. Now, I'm not a super fan of RGB like a lot of people are, but I do think that for some things it does have a really cool effect. And on a bike, if you're riding at night, having more LEDs and things that make you stand out is just going to ultimately be safer and it's going to look cool in the process. But everyone knows safety is third, so that's more of an afterthought and just a happy accident. USB cables make perfect RGB lighting wires because they have four wires in them. Soldering up this many LED strips is incredibly tedious. Let me just do the math for scale here. That's seven strips times four wires, which is 28 smaller wires, and that's just for the strip side. Then you double that again for the controller side, and that's 56 connections of stripping, twisting, placing, soldering, you get it. And now I'm going to start bundling them together so I can test them and make sure they all work correctly. I learned my lesson on my first e-bike when I made some of these strips by not really reinforcing the ends of them. And those tiny wires do not like to be strained almost at all, especially at the solder point. Alright, let's test these. Okay, it looks like I have a blue channel out on one of those strips, so I'm going to have to redo that one. I think all the other ones are working. And that is a relief because I didn't want to redo this a bunch of times if you have one LED out. I thought I had tested these before, but it's always good to retest them before you button everything up. And finally, success. After testing all these, all of the strips that I made now work correctly. I'm just overdoing this now and putting some black electrical tape for insulation. I probably didn't need to do this, but I have seen some LED strips where the bottom of it is not quite molded correctly. And after all this work, I really did not want to risk a short, even though it probably would have been fine. And to give it just a little extra finish, I'm sleeving the wires in some navy paracord. And here's what I didn't do on my first bike, which I learned from, which is to massively reinforce these wire ends. I know, I know, I am totally overdoing it and they do not need this much reinforcement, but I really love hot gluing things. I'm definitely the type that likes to way overdo things the first time than to have to keep coming back and redoing the same thing over and over. Let's finish stitching these up with some hot glue and we will check out our finished product. It was a lot of work, but it was definitely worth it in the end. These came out really great and they're going to be extremely robust and hold up very well. Now all we have to do is stick them on the bike and thread in the wires. Another cool feature about this particular frame is that it has holes in the tubing of the frame to run wires through so that it can be really clean internally as well. I thought that was a nice touch for the wires that are going to go to the back of the bike.
Now unfortunately my controller did not fit inside of the frame with the side panels on it and I really wanted the controller inside of the frame so I decided I had to modify it. I'm pretty sure I could have gotten away with only cutting one of them off but since I had already taken one off I might as well take the other one off too. This was surprisingly tough to get through. This aluminum is really thick and I was like aluminum supposed to be soft. I should be cutting right through this but it took me quite a while. I really do need to get some cutting discs from my grinder because it would make situations like this go a lot faster. I'm just kind of used to doing things the old fashioned way with a hacksaw and it works. It's just a lot slower. Now I'll just clean up some of the edges with some sandpaper and clear out some of the chips that got stuck in the fins here with a toothbrush. And here's another shot of the holes through the chassis where you can run your wires from the back all the way up to the front. It's pretty cool. I was going to hard mount the book converter, but that little tab right there fits very tightly when it's compressed between the plastic and the frame. And now it's time to stuff the battery, the controller, and all that wiring into the case. And now it's time to connect the phase wires from the motor to the controller. You just line up the green, blue, and yellow and then add the power and ground from the battery. If this battery or controller was even a little bit bigger, I don't think I'd be able to fit them and all the wiring inside of this case. After finally buttoning all that up and getting the side panels on, I needed to take another break. And my cat will just follow me around wherever I go. He will just keep following and following. I could just walk in circles and he'll keep following me around. <laughs> And here's pretty much where we are at this point with the build and it is coming along very nicely. We are working our way towards the end and I cannot wait to ride this thing. Do you see that headlight? That's headlight number two and we're gonna break it in the next episode. We got a lot done and we're inching our way towards completion but then of course I ran into another issue. I was excited to complete this front end here, but then I came into a problem where I tried to connect the throttle and yeah, that's not going to work. So that's where I'm calling it for this episode and I'll have to figure out a solution to this problem. We made a lot of progress, we burned through a ton of wiring, and we're that much closer to getting this thing on the road. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Join me in part 3 where we make a custom edge lit acrylic dashboard for the bike. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.